Welcome everyone to Common Table, Church Online for Everyone. I'm Pastor Wendy. Our message tonight is the Pentecost message. You know, the one where the flames come down on all the people? But before we get to our message, let's open our hearts with an opening prayer. Please pray with me. Wonderful Creator, you have created the entire universe and all that's in it. May we appreciate all that you have given us. And may we be the light to spread your word to others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, let's sing. With all 
creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. so many ways to give and be generous. We can give of our time and talents, using them to show others the love of what Jesus looks like. We can invite people into a community that cares for one another and encourages one another. We can also give of our resources, trusting that God will use our gifts to impact this community in powerful ways. If this is your first time at Common Table, Consider this as a gift to you. If the common table is the place that you call your church home, we ask you to give generously to support this ministry so that we can continue to serve others. You can text an amount to the number on your screen or use the Give link in the chat. Thank you so much for being a part of this community and for sharing your gifts so that there's a little more of heaven right here on earth. Now, let's worship God with generous hearts. Thank you. 
Our scripture for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. The Word of God for the people of God. I would like to continue on with my story from the eyes of Simon Peter. Just for a quick review, Simon Peter was a fisherman fishing along the shore of Galilee when Jesus uh, asked him to follow him. And he did so with the miracle of all the fish that, Jesus, that um, Peter caught that morning when he hadn't caught any fish all night long. And then uh, uh, Peter followed Jesus for the next three years and then saw him crucified, dead and buried. Then he rose from the dead and for the next day, next 40 days, Jesus appeared among the believers. But after 40 days, the disciples were gathered and Jesus went up into heaven and the believers were just standing there wondering when two men in white robes said, don't be afraid, stop staring. He'll come back the same way you saw him leave. So this is the story of Peter. We were scared, and we returned to that same room, the Mount of Olives, that same upper room. There were about 120 of us. I stood up and I said, we must move on. There are only 11 disciples, and now we need to choose a 12th. And so Matthias was, stole, was chosen. Now we continued to meet in that upper room. But 10 days later is the festival of Pentecost. People flock to Jerusalem from all different countries, and they flocked to Jerusalem to celebrate the wheat harvest. Now, this uh, festival is almost as important as Passover, and Passover occurs just after the barley harvest, and so people came to Jerusalem to buy the barley. Suddenly, a rush of wind at this uh, wheat festival. The Holy Spirit comes on everyone. Flames settle on people's heads. We, uneducated men of Galilee, are speaking to these devout, wealthy, educated Jews from every nation, and we're speaking to them in their own language a language we don't know, and we're understanding the languages as they talk back. Oh, the different people were coming from all these countries, like Parthian, they were Medes, they were Elamites, from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phygeria, Pamphylia, Egypt, areas around Libya and Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And miracle of miracles, we can talk to each of them in their own native language. And we told them of the wonderful things that God has done for them in their own native language. As I said, a language we didn't know. These wealthy, educated foreigners were amazed and perplexed. How do you know that they were wealthy and educated? Well, they were well-dressed and they came with money to buy the wheat. And here we were, just these ordinary people. 
well, these Hupti Upti Jews were saying they were quite perplexed. Some of them were quite perplexed. But others of them said, ah, they're just drunk. And I stepped forward and I said, and I was with the other 11 disciples, and I said, now listen, make no mistake, we are not drunk. It's only 9 a.m. There isn't time to get drunk. And then suddenly the words of the Joel prophet just come pouring out of my mouth. And I said, in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all the people. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. And the spirit will fall down even on the servants, men and women. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I have you think of what this might look like to be in that situation and these flames come down on you. Do you think the Holy Spirit is flames? Or could the Holy Spirit be something else? I'd like to share with you that I think the Holy Spirit is mist. There was one February morning. I was in the sanctuary of a church I was serving, and I was trying to project slides so the praise we could sing along with the praise band. The program was very new and very alien and liked to crash and it wouldn't do this, that, and the other. And I was completely and totally frustrated to the point of tears. As the praise band got started, I remember just burying my head and saying, God, if you want media this morning, you're going to have to run it. I looked up. I had been hiding behind the computer monitor so no one in the sanctuary could see me. And I happened to look up and there was a courtyard to the left of the sanctuary with windows. And I could see a mist come in and it came across the pews and then it came straight for me and parted on either side of me. I felt something pick up my hand and start moving the computer keys so that the words appeared. That morning, the Holy Spirit ran the media for the praise service. I want to take a moment to explain a little bit as you think about what the Holy Spirit looks like for you, or is it flames, or could it be something else? I mean, I think of mist. I think of the early spring, um, spring and fall days when I walk out to my barn and I can see the sun and I see the mist filter down through the trees to the ground. And I've always looked at that mist and stopped and went, that's the Holy Spirit for me to see each of those mornings in the spring and in the fall. So I want to take a moment to stop this story and explain a little bit of Jewish history. This is the festival of Pentecost. It's a very, very important Jewish holiday, Jewish festivals that the Christians have stolen. The barley harvest is celebrated just before Passover. The Jews were there as slaves to bring in that barley harvest. And so they had the barley to take when they escaped to Egypt, out of Egypt into uh, the Promised Land. And then the festival of Pentecost occurs a week of weeks later, and it's the barley harvest. So what's this week of weeks? Well, week is seven days times seven, which is 49. And so the next day is 50, is the day that they celebrate. 50 is five, or Pentecost. And so that's where Pentecost comes. It's the celebration of the wheat harvest. Now, bread is the staple of both Jews and Christians. And it's made from ground grains, such as barley or wheat. Well, you know, the Lord's Prayer is, give us this day our daily bread. And so, barley and wheat are very important 
and are celebrated as major festivals in agricultural communities, in the Jewish communities of, uh, of those early days. Now, for the Jewish Pentecost, devout, well-educated, and wealthy Jews have traveled to Jerusalem. So as the scripture says they're living in Jerusalem, um, I don't interpret that as being permanently living in Jerusalem. I mean that they've traveled and they're in inns and houses with friends and wherever that they can find lodging. But uh, they're present in Jerusalem and they came to buy the wheat. And it's amazing that God sent the Holy Spirit on this important Jewish festival. Now, to really understand what was going on with Pentecost, I'd like to sort of put this in modern day terms. Uh, let's uh, imagine the United Nations, and it's based in New York City. There are 193 nations part of the United Nations, but there are hundreds of different languages and uh, thousands of different dialects. Now, the purpose of the United Nations is not to buy barley or wheat, but to keep peace, to allow the different countries to come together and explain their whole story so that you understand things from the beginning and then the middle and then the end, and you're not just caught up in one little segment. And so the different countries can come together and sort out the different differences that they have and hopefully come to a reasonable conclusion to keep the world at peace. And people put on their little headphones, and as you do that, you hear the speaker in your own language. Otherwise, there'd be such a language barrier, nothing could be, ever be done. Suppose all of these ambassadors are coming to the United Nations. Now, an ambassador is likely to be well-educated, uh, upstanding, one that the people can trust to understand all of the different things, uh, wealthy, educated, prim and proper. That's what I look at when I think of people that are ambassadors to the United Nations. Now, let's suppose as they're coming in to the United Nations that all of these street people from New York City start coming up. I mean, prostitutes, druggies, homeless people. I mean, the early Christians were just ordinary people because Jesus picked the least and the lost to be his followers. So think of all of these homeless people coming up to these fancily dressed ambassadors. And then, as they begin to speak, instead of talking in uh, any kind of accent that uh, they possibly could have, they're speaking in that perfect language of that well-educated person. And they're telling them about being peaceful and accepting of, of everyone. And that uh, we need to love one another and not make war and get along. Imagine that happening. And as they talked, the prostitutes and the druggies and the street people were able to understand the language of these foreign countries and just talk to them. Wouldn't that be amazing? So that is what this whole story looks like. I pray that the language barrier and the faith barriers can be overcome so we can begin to understand and love each other and embrace what we hold in common rather than how we are different. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living hope Your presence Oh, I've tasted and seen
scene of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are for being with us tonight and pray that the message of the Holy Spirit was meaningful to you. We will continue with the book of Acts next Saturday as the early Christians form a community. If you feel led to be part of this service, 
like doing a spotlight, which is something you're involved in, or a welcome, a prayer, or a closing, please let me know. And you may email me at wendy at faithpointum.org. You may also email me if you just simply want someone to talk to. Have a safe week, everyone, and be God's.